So when we get to the back of the bus, we want to make sure that everything is secure. So we touch everything. Under the bus, we're going to make sure that our exhaust system is good, it's secure, no missing bolts, no holes. We're going to look at our frame and make sure that it's straight with no cr cracks or welds in the cross members. And we're also going to look at our drive shaft to make sure that the U-joints are well lubricated, lubricated and that it's straight, not bent. And then that brings us to the engine compartment. All righty. Okay, so in the engine compartment, I usually do this little A, B, C, P, O. The A is for air compressor. Our air compressor is here. It's securely mounted. It's not leaking. And there's no missing bolts. B is our belts. They cannot deflect more than a half to three quarters inches. They have to be in good repair, not frayed or cracked. Our C is our coolant. This is our coolant here. You can check it through the sight gauge, but I would also take off the cap to check and see um, its level. P is our power steering fluid. It's right here. And I would make sure that on the dipstick, it was between add and full. And our last, our O, is the oil. The dipstick's right here, and again, I would make sure that it's between add and fill. All right, so on this side of the bus, we only have to check the things that we haven't already checked on the first side. So we're going to just make sure that all our compartments are secure, our doors secured, our fuel gauge, our fuel compartment, that it's secure. Again, make sure that all our compartments are secure. And that completes the outside of the bus. So what we're going to check now is our air supply system. And this is one of the have to things. So you have to know um, the exact numbers you're looking for. So the first thing we're going to do is um, with the engine off, we're going to release the parking brake. So make sure your foot is on the service brake. And we're watching the initial drop. And after the initial drop, it cannot move more than three PSI in one minute. So we're actually going to sit here for a minute, keep our eye on the air pressure gauges. And after one minute, it did not drop more than three PSI. Now, the next test is we are going to fan our brakes to make sure that the low air warning light comes on prior to 60 PSI and it comes on right about here. But to see it, you have to turn your key on. So it's key on and we fan our brakes. And the low air warning light came on at 61 PSI, so that's good. Now we're going to continue to fan our brakes, and our parking brake needs to automatically come on between 20 and 45 PSI. And it just came on, and we're at 29 PSI, so that's good. The fourth and final test is we're going to do a safety start. 
That means the green wait to start lights out, it's in neutral, the brake is set, and we're going to let the air pressure come back up until the air governor cuts out somewhere between 100 and 125 psi. So while we're waiting for the air pressure to build, I usually do the four sweeps on the inside of the compartment, starting from the extreme left to the right. And our first sweep is our fans. Oh, that one works. Oh, that one works. And then we do the heaters. Oh, I can hear the one in the back, the other one. We come over here to our defrosters and driver heaters. So they're all working properly. So the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at our mirrors and our windshield and our wipers. So the mirrors, what we want to make sure is they're adjusted properly and they're clean. We're going to look at our windshield to make sure it's clean with no illegal stickers or cracks. We're going to um, look at our windshield wipers, make sure they're moving smoothly, and we're going to make sure that they have uh, fluid in them, which they do. So that's our second sweep. Our th third sweep is going to be our gauges. And so we're going to look at our voltmeter and make sure that it's charging properly. We're going to check our oil gauge to make sure it's in normal range. And we're going to look at our air to make sure it's in the proper operating range. So then our fourth and final sweep is the steering wheel straight down. So we're going to test the horn and it worked. Then we're going to turn our wheel until we can see it out of our front mirror. And we're going to make sure that there's no more than 10 degrees free play, which is about 2 inches on a 20 inch wheel. And there isn't. So now we're going to go straight down and we're going to uh, push down on our accelerator pedal and make sure that there's freedom of movement, it's not binding, there's no unusual noise. And then we do the same thing through the brake pedal. Freedom of movement, not binding, no unusual noise. And now we're going to wait until we hear that air pressure gauge pop out between 100 and 125. OK, so our air pressure is up to 110. So we should be hearing that air governor cut out any time now. And there it was, and she's right at 125, so that's perfect. So now because we have a full tank of air, we're going to do the brake test. And the way we do that is the brake's on, we put the bus in drive, and we just attempt to move forward. The parking brake held. So now, we're going to release the parking brake, and we only need to move forward a foot or two. Oh, and the service brake held. So that's perfect. So now, we get to turn the bus off, and we get to finish up with our four E's, which is the engine, the entry, the emergency equipment, and the emergency exits. So let's start with our engine. OK, so we're going to start with our engine compartment. And so the things we can find in this type of engine is we can see our dipstick for our oil. And we would make sure that was between the add and full mark. Uh, the air compressor in this one, you really can't see. It's, it's down there. But what we would check on it is to make that it was securely mounted, not cracked, not leaking no bolts missing. Uh, the belts are down here and we would make sure that they're not frayed or excessively worn and that they don't deflect more than a half to three quarters inches. And for the power steering and the uh, coolant, let's go out to the front of the bus. Okay. So if we were going to check our coolant level, we have a sight gauge right here. And I would take the radiator cap off to see the level.
And then to check our power steering fluid, we look at this dipstick and to make sure that it's between the add and the full mark. And that takes care of the engine compartment. So next we're going to um, check our entry and there's three things we're going to look at. We're going to make sure that the door opens and closes smoothly and that, you know, the seal around them, the rubber gas gaskets are good. We're going to look at the stairway and make sure there's no tripping hazards, that none of the um, vinyl has peeled back. And we're going to make sure that both of our handrails are secure. And so now we're going to go to our emergency equipment. Our fire extinguisher is right here. It's securely mounted and it's in the green. Our rest of our emergency equipment is up here. So we see that we have our three uh, triangles, emergency triangles, our first aid kit, and our body fluid cleanup kit. Now our buses do not um, have extra circuit breakers because they run on fuses. So the only thing we have left is our emergency exits. So all the windows with the black rubber around them, the front windows, the door, the back windows, the side door, these are all kicked out, kick out windows that can be used uh, in an emergency. We also have the front door if you release the air. It is also an emergency exit. We have three emergency exits on the top of the bus. We have one side door. And we have the back door, which is another emergency exits. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, as I go to one of the exits to make sure that the buzzer goes off, I'm going to check the bottoms of my seats. And you always check them right here because if they're going to be loose, this is where they tend to be loose at. So we're going to check every seat. And while we're down here, we're looking at the condition of the floor to make sure that there aren't any tripping hazards. We're going to open the door and we have to open it to lock the, oh, the buzzer works. We open it to lock position. Oh, that worked. And also the emergency spring seat, we have to make sure that it comes up quickly, which it does. So we're going to finish looking at the backs of all our seats. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the backs are good. And by doing that, we just have to bang on each of them. And as we come up, we just look at the condition of the windows, making sure none are broken, cracked. And that's all there is. We're all done with the inside of the bus.